powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. As Montanans wait patiently and some not so patiently to reopen, another huge relief bill is moving through Congress. The president praising the Senate after it approved a measure to give billions more dollars to small businesses and hospitals after a week of negotiations. Natalie Brand is at the White House tonight with more. President Trump is already looking to the next COVID-19 relief bill after the Senate passed a nearly half trillion dollar deal to give additional funding to small business relief programs, hospitals and testing. I urge the House to pass the bill and they're going to be voting on it, I imagine, very, very soon. The Treasury Secretary said changes will go into place to stop large companies from getting loans through the Paycheck Protection Program. Those big firms who have already been approved for loans will be asked to give them back. To the extent these companies didn't understand this and they repay the loans, that will be okay. And if not, there'll be potentially other consequences. President Trump discussed testing with New York Governor Andrew Cuomo in a closed door meeting. We'll all work together to help them secure additional tests, and we hope that this model will work with the other states as well. Monday night, the president tweeted he would take executive action to temporarily halt immigration. The State Department has already been restricting visas due to the coronavirus since last month. It would be wrong and unjust for Americans laid off by the virus to be replaced with new immigrant labor flown in from abroad. The president says the pause will last for 60 days and only applies to those applying for permanent residency. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Well, both of Montana's senators supporting the bipartisan bill. Democrat John Tester saying it is needed to slow the spread of the virus while assisting Main Street businesses that are the backbone of our economy. Tester went on to say he'll be holding the federal government accountable to ensure the resources that are provided today get swiftly to the folks that need them and working to fix eligibility issues so more Montana small businesses can actually use the programs that have been created for them. And Republican Steve Daines also weighing in saying replenishing the Paycheck Protection Program is critical to helping Montana small businesses keep their doors open and workers employed. As of today, Dane says Montana small businesses have received 13,456 loans for over $1.4 billion under this program. And he says this new boost in funding will continue to help Montana small businesses and workers during this tough time. Dane's also mentioned that $16 million will be earmarked for COVID-19 testing here in Montana. Governor Steve Bullock is expected to reveal some changes to the Montana stay at home order at a news conference tomorrow. After almost four weeks of life altering directives, we could see some easing of those restrictions put into place to prevent and control COVID-19. Non-essential businesses were ordered to cease operations back on March 26th. Most activities were prohibited. The time for Bullock's news conference is yet to be announced. We will let you know when we know, and we'll also broadcast it live on air and online. Four new cases of COVID-19 reported across the state today, including another one here in Yellowstone County. This brings the state total to 437 confirmed cases across Montana. More than half of those individuals are recovered now, 273. 14 people are reported hospitalized, and so far 12 Montanans have died. In Wyoming, COVID-19 has now claimed the lives of four members of the Northern Arapaho tribe. This brings the state all four had been hospitalized in central Wyoming. The state now has 322 confirmed cases. This is still the lowest total across the country. Business owners and employees across the state are chomping at the bit to get back to work. Governor Bullock's stay at home order set to expire Friday and it's anyone's guess about how the plan to reopen the state will move forward. Yellowstone County restaurants, bars and casinos will have to submit a plan to the health department before serving customers. Kitchen's Mitch Leggy brings us more details. Before Yellowstone County restaurants, bars, casinos and wineries can open again to the public, they'll have to fill out a social distancing form to be completed and turned in to the health department. The restaurant's social distancing plan has been available to fill out since March 18th. At the Billings City Council meeting last night, Yellowstone County Health Officer John Felton said that about 50% of the county's restaurants had filled out and completed the plan. Now, this plan does not have to be completed by other non-food related businesses like retail and gyms because the health officer does not license those establishments. The other types of organizations don't need to complete any sort of, of plan. We're providing them guidance on things to think about, 
but the plan actually only applies to the food service establishments. Felton said that even if the governor says restaurants are okay to open, he as the health officer still has the authority to keep them closed if he sees a significant public health risk. Reporting at home in Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. All right, thank you, Mitch. And if you're a business owner who needs to fill out a social distancing plan, information can be found at riverstonehealth.org. COVID-19 is changing the way real estate agents do business, but hasn't stopped houses from being bought and sold in Billings. The pros say there are enticing reasons to buy or sell right now, and they're optimistic that the local market will rebound quickly from any COVID-19 cool down that might happen. Buying or selling a home may seem like the last thing on many people's minds during the COVID crisis, but broker Brian Gentry says it hasn't slowed business like you might expect, although it has changed it. It's really changed it. It went from, for me, especially as a handshake business, to I can't shake anybody's hand anymore. I've got to stay six feet away from them. Everything that can be done by a computer is done that way. Virtual tours have taken the place of open houses. And when a house is shown, special precautions are taken. And we can go out, we can meet with two clients, one agent, two or a home, uh, wearing, wearing our masks, um, sanitizing anything we, we may touch with Clorox, or Clorox disinfecting wipes and so forth. Gentry believes that some sellers may be more hesitant right now to list their homes. Our inventory is down a little bit, so um, we're down from last year. And so we would like to see more inventory in our market. There are buyers out there waiting to buy. Deb Parker is president of the Billings Association of Realtors. If it drags on for longer, are you concerned about uh, what, what effect it might have? Well, obviously it could impact us as it does other businesses in our community. But overall, I think Billings as a whole can weather this fairly well. And as long as we get to see those people employed again, I think we'll move along in our market very easily. And not only is it a good time for sellers with the inventory being low here in the market, but one thing going for buyers is that interest rates are as low as they've been in some time. And you can catch all of these stories in the Rebound series on our website, ktbq.com. We'll be running Rebound stories every weekday as we highlight the efforts of Montana businesses as they get back on their feet. Well, 33 Montana National Guard airmen and soldiers are headed to Billings for training. Their task is to help construct a temporary medical facility at Metro Park Expo Center. Now, according to Yellowstone County Commissioner Dennis Pittman, that 90 bed medical facility is not intended for use at this time. The facility has the capability to treat non COVID-19 medical conditions if the local health care system should ever become overwhelmed. The 90 bed facility is mobile and can be disassembled and reassembled as needed across the state. The National Guard troops are scheduled to arrive in Billings tomorrow and construction is scheduled to be complete a week from today. Well, turning to Chief Forecaster Bob McGuire now, and if you're looking skyward tonight, you may be seeing a shower of a different kind. Yeah. It looks like a good night for it. Huh, yeah, normally we talk about raindrops and things like that. This is going to be a little harder than that. It's a meteor shower tonight, and I tell you what, if normally we have mostly cloudy skies. It's hard to see these things, but tonight we have beautiful clear skies tonight, and you're going to be looking at the Lyrid meteor shower. Now, where are you going to see these things? Well, you look towards the northeast wind uh, tonight, probably about around midnight or a little bit later. Tonight is the peak, and so I think what's going to happen, you might see maybe be up to 20 meteors per hour if you get out there after midnight tonight. Uh, also, the weather's going to be very perfect for it. It's not going to be too cold, about 51 degrees at midnight. You're looking at clear skies and mild temperatures, and you're going to see those meteors coming right at you out of the north. It'll look just like that. And our forecast looks very nice, too. We'll chat more about that coming up in a few more minutes. All right, thank you, Bob. Authorities have tentatively identified the pilot killed yesterday in that fiery plane crash just north of Billings, but they still need to wait for dental records for confirmation. The FAA arrived in Billings yesterday afternoon to begin their investigation, while other investigators arrived this morning. That twin-engine plane went down around 10 yesterday morning after the pilot took off from Billings Logan International Airport, crashed on the property. The Billings Rod and Gun Club burst into flames and sent dark black smoke into the sky above. Although we had hoped to fill the downtown streets of Billings with women in red floral t-shirts this spring, the COVID-19 virus has altered that plan, but you don't have to miss out on the 39th annual Montana Women's Run on Saturday, May 9th. That event is still on. You can don your red t-shirt with others across our community and region, but this year you just get to pick your own route. The Women's Run will be a virtual race this year. That means you can run, jog, or walk, just pick up sidewalk, a trail, a treadmill, or a track. 
T-shirt design Sunday, May 3rd is T-shirt uh, is uh, May 3rd is T-shirt deadline. Thursday, May 7th, all the registration closes on uh, Saturday, May 9th. This year, the uh, women's run will be mailing T-shirts and race numbers out to participants. So get signed up soon for that two or five mile race. You can head to womensrun.org to get that done. Also, you can like the Montana Women's Run Facebook page to learn more. And the funds raised during this event go to some very important causes across our region. So get signed up, celebrate Mother's Day weekend, and join us for the Montana Women's Run. All right, still ahead on the Q2 10 o'clock news. Finding love is never easy, but it's even more difficult during a pandemic. We're going to take into the world of virtual dating Plus, we learn about some of the challenges some college students are having to face while learning from home. Then a little later in sports, will it be strike three for the Billings Mustangs? Scott has the latest details coming up in just a bit. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.